The king in the north! The king in the north! Yo, as always, like, share, subscribe. Now let's just get into it. So before I get started, let me thank Greg Saudi. He always donates to the page every year consistently. I appreciate it, bro. And uh, now let's just get into it. So Michigan just defeated UConn 59 nothing. Now, this was a cakewalk, honestly. And... I feel some of y'all on the on the schedule being so easy that these games are kind of boring. But best believe it's going to turn up. And me personally, close, tight games, I'm about to have a heart attack watching them. So this gives me a breather to relax and just watch the team. No worries. But, you know, that's just me. Now, this was a laugher, but... There were some things that I noticed, and I'm going to just get into it. So, Michigan pretty much comes out, can run, can throw, does whatever they want to pretty much. Now, but what I will say is I saw J.J., he, he had some low throws. He had some low throws, so he, he has to work on that. He had like a – he he had a, a miss – should have gave it on the read once. But for the most part, he was pretty solid. You know, there was no big mistakes. You know, nothing I can just really get on here and just critique like that. He did have a couple, few low throws where he probably should have led him a little better. It was just low, so the receiver caught it. But they couldn't do anything but catch it. They couldn't catch and run. Now, J.J. was 15 of 18 for 214. Now, Blake... Blake got all the touchdowns because the receivers, the JJ probably could have had maybe two, maybe three touchdowns, but the receivers would get tackled at like the one and Blake would punch it in. Blake was 12 of 71 for five and had five touchdowns, which is awesome for him. Puts his numbers up there, at least in touchdowns. Now, uh, besides that, the running game wasn't, wasn't all that great to me. Now, I know you might say, well, the score and things like that, but to me, and this is just me speaking on what it could be, this isn't anything in fact, but to me, this team, because every team's every year the team is different, and that to me, and I know our, our, our baseline scheme, what Harbaugh wants to do is pound the rock. And they say they want to be more balanced this year. But to me, this this might be a year where the, your strength is honestly the, the, the passing attack. That might be what your bread and butter is, is the passing attack. You might need to throw to set up the run this year. And like your bread and butter is, is passing it. Regardless of how you're doing it, that might be your bread and bread, how your bread is buttered. But we'll see next week against Maryland how we how the run game does. But that's just something that's in the back of my mind because you you can have a good offensive line, but that doesn't mean they're going to be great at running the ball. They might be better at pass blocking. So we'll see. We'll see. That's just I'm just throwing that out there. But uh Besides that, the first team offense was pretty solid. There's no, really nothing to talk about with that. Uh, what's his name? Cade. Cade got in. Uh, Harbaugh puts uh, Harbaugh puts Cade in some just weird positions to me. We're up. I don't know what it was. We're up 31, I believe. 31 nothing right before the half. There's 24 seconds left, and he puts Cade in. Why did you put him in? Like, what's the point of putting him in with 20, 24 seconds left? So he gets in, gets sacked on the first play, I believe, uh, from behind. It was a hard hit. He got, I think he rolled his ankle a little bit or something. Then the, the second play, he stands in there, throws a nice completion to Ronnie Bell, but he gets blasted by two UConn defenders, gets blasted. 
And he looks like he, he didn't come back out for the second half. He stayed in there getting training with the trainer. What it, I'm not sure if it was a concussion, his ankle, what it was, but he didn't come back out. So that's that. We don't know. We'll see what, what it is. Obviously, it's Harbaugh, so he'll probably say he's working through something. But why why put him in with 24 seconds left in the half, bro? Like, what, why you do that, man, like that? Like, he puts this man in, in, in situations that are almost no win for him. But, so that's that. So, we're not, we, won't, we don't know how bad the injury is. If he can't play next week. Expect Davis Warren to be the backup quarterback, and he's looked not good for the most part. So, I'm not, I'm not, uh, that's not a problem to me. Honestly, you might say he played better than Cade these first two games, so maybe he should be the backup. But you know, Cade's got the experience now with the defense, and I would hear some people say that maybe the oh the defense isn't isn't that, but. This is the thing about the defense. Like, you have to understand, this isn't last year. And if you pay, if you pay attention, you have to go back revisionist history. We weren't getting – Aiden and Ojabo didn't take off until almost Big Ten play. They weren't getting a bunch of sacks in these cupcake games. I think Washington, they started to turn up a little bit. So, that was probably – that probably would have been this game. But they didn't – we didn't – we weren't just getting a bunch of sacks. And you have to look at what's happening. Okay, UConn's offense, they were horrible. Their offense is horrible. But their quarterback was 4 of 16 for 17 yards. And I know people are going to say that's UConn, but Michigan called off the dogs early in the second half. Like, we blitz heavy. If it's a – if it's – if if – if Michigan is trying to win, they're going to blitz in certain situations. They called off the dogs, and they weren't even blitzing anymore. And UConn still couldn't do anything. Like So people talking about like the pass defense, uh, I'll have to wait and see because DJ Turner looks good, the, the safeties look good, and Jermon Green looks good, and Will Johnson's getting his steps, and Sainer still – he looks good, but I'm I'm still waiting to see Saint we still go up against better quarterbacks in competition. But I trust DJ Turner and Jamon Green. But this this defense, when it matters, the goal isn't just to get the sack. The goal is to make to, to make the quarterback get rid of the ball and get rid of it before he wants to, and it be an incomplete pass. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if you get the sack or the incompletion on third down. All you need is either one, so they have to punt. So, yeah, you want to get sacks, but uh, UConn really doesn't throw down the field that much. They throw a lot of sideways passes. So, with that being said, 4 of 16, they threw for 20, 24 yards on the day. They're... Turner had 17, and Millen had seven. So, all I can say on that is, I mean, they're doing the defense is doing what they have to do, and they haven't they haven't given up any touchdowns. I don't think the I don't think the first team defense is giving up any points, honestly. So that's just that. And one more thing on the, on our offense, at least, I like the swing passes and the quick screens. That's something that has to be done a lot. That's something that ha when you've got talented guys, you just swing it to them. You don't have to throw down the field. Now, don't get it twisted. I want us to throw down the field, but when you got dudes like Ronnie and Roman, even Cornelius, you just throw swing passes. Get these dudes in the open field and let them run. So I like that's one thing I did like to see and this was a vanilla game plan. Like, going against these teams, you're not going to show that much. So, it's a vanilla offense. We'll see the offense probably opened up more next week and get to see, you know, more down the field throws and bigger plays, hopefully. Now, what? Special teams. Special teams was big today. 
this was a good special team day as far as uh, Colazar blocked a punt. A.J. Henning returned a punt. Returned a punt. So, A.J. Henning, you, you got that. You got your TD. Now you can calm down back there. Now you can calm. They got you a few touches on offense. You, you returned a punt. Now you... Just calm. Now you can calm down back there a little bit, bro. You, you got you got it done. You calm down just a little bit. So it was good to see that. Um, let's see. Moody missed like a 60-some yarder, but it was on point. I think Harbaugh just wanted to try it just to see how far this dude could kick in game. And it came, it came up about five, probably seven yards short. But it was on point. It was... It, the the curve and the direction was perfect, so that's that. I mean, it don't mean much, honestly. All the backups got to play in this game. Like, they cleared the bench. I think they played, like, eight, nine quarterbacks. Yeah, they played a, they played a ton of quarterbacks. Seven quarterbacks got to play. Uh, Ronnie almost got 100 yards. He had seven receptions for 96 Roman Wilson, three receptions for 64. A.J. Henning, four receptions for 37. Cornelius didn't get a catch. He slipped on his on his out route, it looked like, but he didn't get a catch. One thing that's troubling me is, what's going on with Andrell Anthony? Like, I don't understand why they don't get this dude any touches. I don't know if he's in the doghouse or what, but they don't, they don't try to get this dude any touches. And... We've all seen what he could do against Michigan State last year. Yeah, it's the worst pass defense in the country last year. But this dude is, uh, he's got the skills. He's got the tools. And they act like he was going to get touches. It, it just kind of boggles me that they don't even try to get him the ball at all during the game. N none of these games they try to get him a, a swing pass or anything. Like, he can't get a screen? He can't get a bubble screen? Slip screen? Tunnel screen? I mean... I, I guess, but, you know, I just seem like you'd be trying to get this dude the ball. Now, one more thing on the on the offense. I would like to see, and maybe this is just because it was cupcakes, but I'd like to see in the red zone fades, uh, just jump balls, fades, jump balls, and uh, back shoulder throws. You got J.J., you know he can put it on the money. You got Cornelius. You got Andrew Anthony, 6'3", 6'2". Throw that thing up to them. But that could just be because we're playing these cupcakes. They're just trying to establish the run and get the offensive line in these short yardage downs. With You, you know, it's fourth and goal, third and goal, second and goal, you know. Just trying to establish the offensive line. That could be it, but hopefully that's something we see later. You know, when against bigger, better, bigger, better competition. But besides that, uh, let's see the de the defense. The defense with the with the with the the D line and some things I'm noticing. One thing I'm noticing is the speed when like the quarter when the quarterback breaks the pocket. I'm not seeing a lot of speed get to the ball. It's getting there. We're getting there, but we're getting there slow when we look slow to me. To me, at least. We look slow. When the quarterback gets out of the pocket, we're, we're, look, we're running around like he's scrambling. We look a little bit slow to me. That could be just me, but that's what I'm seeing, and I don't like it. Luckily, we don't play too many running quarterbacks. Uh... What's it? Peyton Thorne can run a little bit, not really. Clifford will run, but he's not that fast. Baby Tua, he doesn't really run like that. So it's really, I mean, it really isn't a problem in the Big Ten because we don't really play many quarterbacks that scramble. And running and scrambling quarterbacks have killed Michigan for the last 20 years. But we don't really pay anybody like that. It's just something that I've noticed is we look slow when that happens this year because we don't have Ojabo and Aiden's motor was just ridiculous. So if somebody scrambled, he was always coming around the edge, and if he tried to scramble away, he, he like his motor was nonstop, so he's going to continue chasing him. But that's something I've noticed. And with the D-line itself, 
in certain downs, they're gonna have to get the best and the best and fastest dudes on the field. Like uh, the the guy that came in from Bama, third down, he probably needs to be on the field because he's kind of a freak of nature. Him and Jalen Harrell and whoever you want to put it at the tackle spots, but those two dudes probably need to be on the field in third downs once we get into real competition. That's just what I'm seeing. Mike Morris, he gets around the edge, but he's slower. So if if the quarterback steps up, he's done. He's just, he, I mean, he, this is just me being honest. He's done. When the quarterback gets around the edge, he's done. He's He just don't have the motor or the speed to, you know, continue chasing him like that. So those downs, I might move Mike Morris to inside to de-tackle. But third and long and downs like that, if you're not blitzing, Anoma, I believe that's how you say some of the name, and and uh, Jalen Harold, they need to be the ends, or or maybe McGregor, but I would move Morris inside. Honestly, that's that's just what I would do. And, and the transfer from from Bama, he needs to be in, like, because he's got he from what I see, he's got the speed and the freakish athleticism to wreak havoc on third downs against better competition because that's what it's all about again doing it against better competition when you we play those type of teams you're gonna need that freak of nature out there and i move morris to the inside give you a little more speed to, at d tackle but that's all i got for this one y'all it ain't much to talk about you know team looked looked good but you can tell they're ready for Big Ten play, like the same as all of us. They're ready to get into some meaningful games against better competition. So that's I think that's what you saw. They they, they kind of I would say they sleepwalked through this game, but it's hard to say that since it was like thirty one nothing at half or something like that. So you really can't say that. They, I think they just ready to they just ready to go. I mean, it's the so are the rest of us. <laughs> so I, I I can't blame them, but. Those are just some things that I noticed and, you know, wanted to touch on. It ain't too much to gripe on when the defense played like they did. UConn's offense was as bad as it was. And they just kind of ran over them in every phase. So that's all I got for this one, y'all. We'll see what the offense looks like next week with against better competition. It matters. Now you're playing against a team that matters in Maryland. Maryland's got a – Maryland's defense is garbage. It it usually is. But they got some receivers, and they, they got baby Tua. So, you know, we'll see how we looking. And J.J. will probably have to play maybe the whole game. And then we'll get to see a full game of what he can do and see him get comfortable and see the play call and get more comfortable with him for a longer – period of time not just the first half you know we're trying to get Blake his touches and we're trying to do this you know you you in these next games you'll have to actually see okay the run game ain't working let's just pass it or you know things like that but that's all I got y'all I don't want to start rambling so good win like share subscribe and as always go blue it's great to be a Michigan Wolverine. It's great to be a Michigan Wolverine.